Hi everyone, welcome to the second section of this video where we're going to look at the step-by-step -step process of how to authenticate to LDAP server on RHEL 8. So in our previous video, we've looked at how we've looked at what LDAP is and the structure of um, LDAP and what a directory server is as well. Alright, and a quick one if you're going to be writing the average CSA 8 exam or the SUSE Linux or the LFCS exam, you can come to this website and click on the exam practice questions or the courses as well and at the end of every um lesson on the website there's always an exam practice question which is related to the topic all right so you can just come to this website to uh, click on the exam practice question and i'm going to be dropping the link to the website in the description section below in one of the videos i have done um it is not actually this uh, rhc sa8 series but it's one of the videos and i did um, the step-by-step -step process about to configure the ldap server on red at seven all right so what we're going to do is to authenticate to that server to the red at seven server using the red at eight system all right so i'm going to be dropping the link to that video in in the description section below so you can see what we did on how to configure the LDAP server. All right, so to authenticate to an LDAP server on Red Hat 8, the first step you need to take is to install the open LDAP client and other client utilities. And to do that, we're going to use the command either yum install or dnf install would do. So we can do dnf install open LDAP client SSSD. You know what i'm just going to copy the command from the website so you can always navigate to the website and copy the command too all right so um i'm going to be dropping like i've said i'm going to be dropping the link to the website in the description section below all right so this is the command I'm just going to copy and paste here oh sorry took the command actually so i'm going to copy and paste this here to install the open adapt client and other client utilities now that this is complete we need to set up the LDAP client authentication with LDAP server using the sssd service so to do that we're going to edit the sssd um, configuration file all right, and um, if the configuration file does not exist, of course, you need to create that configuration file, which is sssd.conf. All right. So I'm just going to um, copy the commands, the parameters rather from the website and paste it here as well. All right, so... Uh, I'm not using a TLS and SSL communication, all right? So if you want to use a TLS communication, um, there's some tweakings you have to do in this parameter, which is on the website as well. And if you also want to use the SSL communication, there are some tweakings you, which you have to do, which is on the website as well. Okay, so I'm just going to save this file. And the next step is to change the permission and the ownership on the file. So I'm just going to do the CH mode. I'm going to give this 600 on etc sssd then sssd.conf all right i'm also going to do a ch on on this file root okay then root on etc sssd sssd.conf all right the next thing to do is to edit the ldap.com file all right so we're just going to edit this file and where we have the base here we're going to put in the domain name all right so um if your domain name is for example my domain name is technid so i'm just going to add technid and this is what i was saying in the previous video that this equals technid and this is dc equals com which you're going to use for the which you're going to use for the base context all right and i'm just going to take this out 
okay and for the uri let me just create a new line for the uri i'm going to add uri line i'm going to um, add this to the ldap followed by the ip or the fqdn of the ldap server all right and my ldap server is the ip is 192.168.1 170.222 okay if i'm not mistaken let me just confirm that so this is the server all right so the ip is 222 okay so that's correct i'm just going to save this file all right the next step is to use the auth select to configure the system all right, so I'm just going to use this to configure the system. And the next step we need to take is to start the SSSD service. So I'm just going to do systemctl start SSSD. I can also enable the service. All right. And um, also for the odd job service, I need to start and enable the odd job this service too as well and to start the service all right so we can verify the um, ldap users all right so i have created on the server i have created the jacob and the docker's user you can see that let's see the local users here you can see that i don't have the user jacob or the docker's user here so i've created them on the server so i can just uh, verify that i'm um, authenticated to the server by doing id jacob all right so i can't still authenticate so let me just go back to the server and restart this lab d service and see if that would resolve the issue So let me do system set your restart slot D service. All right, so let's see if we can still authenticate. We cannot still authenticate. So let me just uh, confirm the configuration files again. Let me see if something is wrong here. This seems to be correct let's see the um, other configuration file which is the um let's see for this one okay let's check the uh dot let's um, check the sssd.com file again oh, all right so i'm just going to check this file so we can see what we've done wrong here all right so i can see the ldap uri this is supposed to be 222 that's an incorrect ip so the ldap server is 222 all right so let's see if um we can authenticate now we cannot still authenticate so let's restart the ssd service again all right so you see now that we can authenticate so I also have um, the user docker's also, I can authenticate. So the authentication is confirmed. And let's um, switch directory to docker's, for example. So you can see that I've been able to switch directory to docker's. All right, let's see if I can list the contents I have in docker's. So I cannot see anything here. If I go to the server, this is um, Docker's. If I go to CD home 
slash docs on the server you can see that i have a file called test1 and i cannot see the file here on the client what we need to do is to configure nfs so that we can be able to access the home directory of LDAP users all right just as we did when we were doing that for Red Hat 7 because i cannot um i cannot see the content of the um of the nf of the LDAP users all right i can't see their home directory so i'm just going to configure nfs All right, I need to be a root user to be able to install NFS. This is Red Hat 8, supposed to be NFS utils. The NFS utils is already installed. All right, so I'm just going to see if i have the export file from the nfs server 192.168 okay so i can see the export list for the server here on the client i have created this um nfs this in the export file on the server all right so you can check how i configured nfs on on the server side if you don't know how to configure nfs all right but it's a very simple configuration so the next thing to do here is to mount the nfs share which i'm going to do this with the command mount and followed by the um the server the ip of the server this is the NFS sheet and I'm going to mount it on slash home. Let me verify that. All right, so you can see that it is now mounted. Okay, so if I try and switch user to Docker now, and I do um, ls, so you can see that I can see the content, the file, um, in the docker's home directory all right so just the same way i can see it here on the server all right so on the server you can see test one and on the client you can also see test one file so thank you for watching please subscribe to this channel and bye for now